Hi there, Jean Greer here at Stylish Fireplaces with some instructions on how to operate your Dimplex Revolution electric insert. So we're going to look at the RBF 30, 36, 36P and 42. The controls on the RBF 24 are slightly different, so we're not going to cover those in this video. The first thing you should try to do is find your owner's manual. The owner's manual always has operation instructions inside and that will cover both the manual controls because every fireplace has a backup set of manual controls and it will also cover the remote controls. As more and more of these fireplaces have apps available, the app information will also be in the operation section. So that's where you're going to find out all the different ways you can control the fireplace and how the individual controls work and what they do. So the first thing I want you to notice here is that I've got this wiggly light on, but I don't see anything else going on on the fireplace. This fireplace has a standby mode, so it is in standby mode. What that does for us here in the showroom is we can have the heater set to a very low setting overnight. We do use these fireplaces to keep our showroom warm in the cooler weather. So overnight, we don't want the temperature to drop too low. So we keep a minimal setting overnight. And this is just a reminder to me that this is in standby mode and the heater could be engaged if the temperature drops below a certain level. So that's just a good reminder for me because otherwise there's no visual cue here that this fireplace still has power running to it or that it might be turning something on like the heater. So it does have a standby mode. When I come in in the morning, I'm going to hit the flame button and I'm going to bring the flames on and it's going to tell me the room's at 17 and so unless my heater goes uh, higher than that, unless my thermostat setting goes higher than that, the heater is not going to engage, but it has been set. And so now I see whatever settings were left when we turned this fireplace off yesterday, those are the settings that are going to come back up. So the flame button brings the flame on and these flames are not adjustable. So I don't have flame speed, I don't have flame color. What I can do with the paint palette is add some colored lights underneath the flame. It's very subtle. It is not something that's easy to see when you're standing back from the fireplace, but there is a red, a blue, and then there you can go without any color at all. So red, blue, or nothing. And it's going to appear down here below the flames and you may not be able to see it from standing back if you're standing it right over the fireplace. You could see those colors. It's very, very subtle. The other light that I can control, there's a 360 degree light here. That's the light that's hitting the back and the side panels here. So I can adjust that. It has color tones. So you can scroll through there, no light at all shining down. And then you've got this color, You've got number two, and then the warmest is number three. So you can adjust those lights. And then there's a brightness button, which is here with the little asterisk. And I can adjust the brightness of the fireplace lights. The other thing that this fireplace has, which is really cool, this button that kind of looks like light and dark, day and night, that is an ambient light sensor. So if I engage that, it's off. Now it's on. It will sense the level of light in my room and adjust the brightness of the fireplace accordingly. So that is a really neat feature that's not very common on electric fireplaces. So something to keep in mind because if you have a really bright space or quite a dark space or in the evening, the lights could be different than they might be during the day. It's nice that the fireplace can sense those changes. As far as the heating goes, it is thermostat controlled, so I have heat up and heat down, so I can turn my temperature up and down. And it will always remind me what the room temperature is at the moment. So the heater button is the wiggly line. So my heat button, it was on, now it's off. I turn it back on, I see the wiggly light. It's telling me my room is at 17, but the unit is set to 16. So in order for this heater to come on, I need to get above the room temperature. I heard a click, I can feel the air, and I can hear the heater. It is now engaging because I've put the thermostat higher than the room temperature. So it's going to work the heater for me and get me up to the temperature I need. I can turn that back down so the heater will go off. There's a cooling off period 
So you're going to hear that fan running for another minute or so while it cools the unit down and then it will go off. So there is a bit of a delayed reaction in the fan, but the heater has been disengaged. If I want to change the display, so it's currently telling me temperatures in Celsius. If I prefer Fahrenheit, I hit both of the thermostat buttons at the same time on the touchpad and it will switch to Fahrenheit or back to Celsius, depending on where I started. It has to be done on the touchpad. It won't work on the remote. If I want to lock out the heat function, which is a nice family friendly feature, I can hit the heater button and the heat down button at the same time, and I'll get those lines. And that tells me the heater has been disengaged and until I unlock it, the heat functions will not work. That is a great feature if you've got little kiddos who are gonna to touch this touchpad because it's right at their level, they can't inadvertently turn on the heater. It's also great in public spaces where people are possibly gonna to touch this control panel. Maybe they shouldn't, but they're gonna play around and uh, you don't want them turning the heater on at the wrong time of the year or setting it to a level that you're not happy with. So you can lock out those functions. So to get them back, I'm going to hit that again. And it doesn't want to feel my fingers, but there we go. It's back on again and it's telling me it's reading it in Fahrenheit now. I can also lock out all the controls. So if I don't want anybody playing around with this, I can hit the star button and the um, heat down button and I can lock out all the controls and then nobody would be able to turn this on accidentally. Um, it's not something I would use very often, but if you have a situation where you don't want people uh, turning the fireplace on when you're not around, you could use the lockout and lock down the controls completely. So those are some of the features that are only available on the touchpad that you cannot control on the remote. So that even if somebody gets hold of this, if you've used one of those lockout features, they will not be able to alter it with the remote. So that's a good thing. And then the last feature that we should talk about is the timer, that's a sleep timer. So if you're concerned about somebody being in the room with the fireplace and then walking away and forgetting to turn it off, or maybe it's in a bedroom and you know you're gonna fall asleep with the fireplace running, set the sleep timer and it will run from anywhere from a half hour up to eight hours and you can scroll through all the various settings and when that sleep timer expires, the whole fireplace will turn off. So that's a great, again, a family friendly feature if you're worried about people leaving the room with the fireplace still running. So that is a, an overview of the Dimplex Revolution RBF 30, 36, 36P and 42, those controls. And you can find your owner's manual at stylishfireplaces.ca. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, we'll have a link to the owner's manual as well.